Welcome to my crazy kitchen. I'm Rakesh, Rootsman Rack. And yeah, I've had a shave. Maybe the first time in five years. But anyway, apart from that, the other important thing I've been doing is digging up some Jerusalem artichokes. And everyone keeps asking me how I make my spicy, fart-free, fermented Jerusalem artichokes. So that's what we're about to do here. So, first things first is to get them cleaned. And for that, the easiest thing is I just soak them and then using a brush just to clean them up. Okay, so I've just uh, literally soaked the Jerusalem artichokes and scrubbed them. Uh, my ideal way is really to use one of these kind of brushes because it's nice and relatively soft and um, it does the job well. But if you don't have something like that, maybe, maybe you could try using something like this. It's a bit harsh and I don't like the fact that it doesn't have natural fibres, but um, if that's what you've got, great. Or maybe a toothbrush, something like that. It's just to get all of the, the mud off and um, don't be afraid if, for example, you know, with this one there was some, uh, some like deep crevices and things which was kind of quite hard to actually get. So don't be afraid to just break it open and make it easy for yourself to, to cut. And also if you get like some critters or something that may have eaten into it, it's useful just to kind of scoop that out because basically there's just going to be loads of dirt inside it. So scoop that out and anything obviously that's rotting you want to take out, which hopefully, you know, they these guys, they last. So they you very rarely ever get rotten ones. The uh, next thing you want to do is maybe take off because this is actually February. So it's quite late in the year and we've had quite a mild February. And so you might want to take these these little bits off, which is what's about to start growing. And um, yeah, so take that off. I normally leave this on because I can then use it to handle to, to actually cut. And I'll show you how I cut it in a moment. So, obviously there's many ways that you could be cutting your juice and artichokes. I like my nice Japanese knife. So I top that off, get rid of that, and just... and get rid of the, the tough part. And that's one way. Another way is to use this beautiful thing, uh, mandolin. And again, you want to top it off. And then... Be very careful with your fingers if you've got something like this. These blades are insanely sharp. So you could be using, well, especially when it gets a bit smaller, I would definitely recommend using this. And yeah, that does it nicely for you, mostly. So I'm going to chop the rest up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, now for the fun part, actually making the brine. So there's a few ways you can do this. Uh, basically you need about 2% of the volume of what you're making to be salt. And most people, especially when they begin, will always measure. And that's what I would advise you to do. But when you start to get used to this, when you've been doing this for as long as I have, you just kind of, no, you just measure it. But at the beginning, I would strongly recommend you actually measure things up. So, uh, what I do is I take my jar, whichever kind of jars you have, and fill it with your Jerusalem artichokes. I'm actually, basically I've got about three times as much as this still unwashed, uh, it's still soaking. So I'm going to actually start making some bigger jars as well, but just is, so this is just for demonstration. So you fill it as much as, you give it a bit of a 
shape to kind of get it to settle a little. And then fill it with water. That's probably enough. Now, I just happen to have two identical jars, so I could do this, but if you didn't, you might want to weigh the empty jar first. But here on my weighing scales, what I've got, if I switch it on, is I can tear it, meaning I can actually put this on and then set it to zero. Then measure this one. And I can see that's about 1.5 kilos. So 2% of that is what? 30 grams? My maths is not so good. Let me go calculate that, double check, and that's how much salt I basically need to add to this. My maths is not that bad. I got it right. So 30 grams for one and a half kilos of artichokes and water. And what I've done is I've measured that and I put it into my pestle and mortar. I've already given it a bit of a grind. I'll just finish that off. Then the advantage of having more than one of identical jars is you can do this little trick, which is to actually pour the water into here and allow the salt to properly dissolve, give it a bit of a shake, etc. And if you're like me, you like it a little bit spicy, then this is the point at which when you're putting your Jerusalem artichokes back in, you can also then add all of the other stuff. And in my case, I really like the warmth of ginger and the spiciness of chili. So I'll add both of those. And the other thing that I typically add are things like uh, Nepalese pepper because I grow them and I have a lot of them and I just love the taste. So let's have a quick go. doesn't have to be all of the water but enough so that it dissolves and then just um, yeah just give it a kind of a bit of a twirl maybe even um, yeah, basically you just need to wait for the salt to really properly dissolve in it and then add the Jerusalem artichoke into it so that will take a few minutes I'll be back so that's a few minutes and if you look carefully at the bottom you'll normally be able to see if the salt has dissolved or not. And in this particular case, most of it has dissolved. There's just a few little grains left. So now I'm going to add chilies, ginger, spices, and then the Julius Marchito. But to be honest, it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Just get it in there. It's done. So here we go. That's my chili and ginger. Now I can add these back as well. As I say, it really doesn't matter what order you put it in uh, because the spices will over time just ferment and mix and mingle and so it really doesn't matter. There's a few ways you can now finish this off. Basically, in this particular case, uh, I want to do a lacto-fermentation, so I want it to be oxygen-deprived 
but I want whatever oxygen is the like carbon dioxide that is being created to escape. So I can use the this proper kilner jar uh, lid for that. But sometimes it's use well you also would it's really useful to keep everything under water. There's a few ways we can do this. Um, these kind of uh, goo jars, or whatever they're called, um, fit really perfectly into here. So what I typically do is I kind of push it down and allow some of the water to kind of even seep into it. And, and that's it basically. Uh, I can put the lid back on. Push it down, and maybe you might want to take a little bit of this water out, um, which is why I let it go into the actual. Um, why well, I let it filter into into there first, so that any excess doesn't kind of overspill, and that's it. You can then leave it. So, in case you don't have a kilner jar, another way to do it is just to use an ordinary jar. And in my case, I've started doing some pottery, so I've made myself some nice weights. And I can weigh things down with this. And But it's pretty much the same pattern. You weigh this, you put in all of the material, all the the Jerusalem artichokes, the water, etc. You find out what is the weight of that. 2% of that is salt. And then put these on top and you're done. And typically, within five days, it's normally edible. It's meaning it's, it's fermented. And, but it's completely up to you how long you want to leave it for. And there's so many different factors Typically you want to leave it in uh, something like, um, I don't know, 18 to 24 degrees centigrade kind of room. And that will get the, you know, the, the colder it is, the slower the fermentation. The hotter it is, the faster the fermentation. And the first day, basically, all it's doing is the salt that's in the brine is killing off all the bad bacteria which leaves behind predominantly lactobacilli. Then, after that, the next few days, then it starts to convert the sugars, the carbohydrates, into uh, lacto, and it starts fermenting, basically. So, after about four or five days, it will actually start uh, fermenting. And it's as simple as that. So here it is. I've, let's say put 2% um, brine in here, I've added whatever spices and chilies and ginger and stuff and then just slotted, it's maybe not so easy to see, I can't really turn it over to make you see this easily but basically I put the, yeah, the weights in and that's kept everything underneath the waterline and that's it, quite literally just leave it for a few weeks and you've got the most incredible, beautiful Spicy Jerusalem artichoke without the fartiness. Wonderful, enjoy. Actually, sitting over here is some that I started making, I don't know, maybe almost a month ago, so it's been sitting here a long time. I'm going to try opening it. Wow. Oh my god. That's so good. It still has this crunchiness. And, um, yeah, it's fresh. It's warm. It's got this ginger warmth to it. And then a little bit of that chilli kick. And it's got that fermented flavour. Oh my god. This is just incredible. Love it. Anyway. And um, yeah, let me know how you get on. If have fun.